Hi, this is section number 16.6 .6 and example number two. So here we have uh, two gears coupled to each other by point O, so you can imagine those uh, move together, right? The smaller gear rolls without slipping over the flat surface. And we are giving the velocity of point O, which is linear velocity, because these rolls and that move in the trajectory that is linear, and we are given that velocity, which is six meters per second, and an acceleration, which is three meters per second squared. Since those are gears that roll without slipping, this instant center of rotation is right in the point of contact. We are given the velocity of the center, and we are asked to find the velocity of A. We could use the information that the system is rolling over this point, but we have to find the angular velocity and angular acceleration of these both gears. So first, I will find, find angular velocity and angular acceleration of gears. So in concept of instant center of rotation, the velocity of C will be the angular velocity of my uh, gear times the vector position of between that point O and the instant rotation. Since I know the velocity and I know the vector, I can say that the angular velocity of the gear will be the velocity O over that distance. And that will be velocity of O is 6 and the distance is 0 0.3. So it gives me an angular velocity of 20 radians per second. And since this is moving in that direction, the angular velocity is in this direction. So it's a negative value. I can do this exactly the same for the acceleration because this has a linear trajectory point O, it does not have any normal acceleration, it only has tangent acceleration. So I can actually say that my tangent acceleration will be angular acceleration times that uh, same distance. So alpha will be equals to that acceleration divided by that distance, 3 over 0 0.3, that gives me and the angular acceleration over second squared. And actually is also negative value. Once I have the angular velocity and the angular acceleration of the rigid body, I can apply my equations to find the velocity using relative uh, coordinate system. So I will attach a coordinate system to my gear in the point of instant rotation. So using my instant rotation x, y fixed to the gear, I can say that the velocity of A will be the velocity of instant rotation. We, we know since it's, the, since it's instant rotation for the concept that this velocity is zero plus uh, omega of that, which we already know the value, in K, and we know that it's a negative value, I will put the negative where I, when I substitute the magnitude, cross the distance from A to that instant uh, center of rotation. So that will be then be negative 20 in K, cross product, and the vector from the instant, uh, uh, the instant center of rotation to A will be negative 0.6, in i plus 0 point in j. Then I do my cross product and I say k cross i is j, 20 times 0 0.3, 6 in i plus 12 in j. So that's the velocity in a. So, this, so I can say vector wise as a vector, this is v is equals to 6 i plus 12 j meters per second, and if I want to calculate it as in magnitude as direction and as magnitude, 
I can say that velocity of A is the square root of 6 squared plus 12 squared, which is equals to 13.4. And the direction will be the tangent, the inverse function of the tangent, 12 over 6, which gives me a value of 63.4. So I can always write the results either in vector form or as magnitude plus a direction. So that was for the velocity. So this was the velocity. And I can do exactly the same procedure to find the acceleration. But as we know, acceleration is always a little bit more complicated than velocity. And the acceleration in A will be equals to the acceleration of that instant center of rotation plus alpha cross R A respect to A C minus omega square R A I C. We have to remember that even though the velocity of the instant center of rotation is zero, not the acceleration. The acceleration we have that we have, well, this move, as you remember, that moves as a cycloid. And then we have a acceleration which is perpendicular to the surface. And if you remember that from the theory, that normal acceleration is omega squared times the radius of curvature, which is in this case is 0 0.3, and is in J. So this is the acceleration of the instant center of rotation plus. Then we have our alpha that we just calculated. And then we have the same vector that we use for the velocity. And then we have the, this component. The value is negative 20 squared. And the vector is exactly the same vector. That is 6.6 .6 in i plus 6.3 in j. Well, we, we, we do our cross product and we uh, put them together and we can find, we put together the i's and the j's and then we got the acceleration in a would be equals to, I'm going to put that here, 243 i plus 6 in j. That's my vector form, meters over second square. And then, as, as I did with the velocity, I can write that in terms of magnitude and direction. And then I have the magnitude will be the square root of those two values that I just, just uh, wrote there, which is 243 squared plus 6 squared. So the magnitude of the acceleration is equals to 243 zero point meters over second squared. And the direction, you know, let's call it phi, is the inverse function of the tangent, 6 over 243. So the phi will be equals to 1.41 degrees. So it's a very small angle that we have for the acceleration. Most of the acceleration is in I uh, direction. This is uh, it. And if you want to see the solution also in the PowerPoint presentation, we have it here, right there.